estimated 1.6 million children go missing each year. That's more than 4,000 children every day. And most parents don't have a clue how to find their child. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers in Suffolk University's downtown Boston studio. Tony Loftus, founder of findyourmissingchild.org, joins Newsmakers. Thanks for being here, Tony. Thank you, Jenny. So those are some staggering numbers. They are. I found those are numbers from the National Runaway Safe Line, which is an organization that helped me when my daughter ran, ran away. Okay, so that's how you've sort of found yourself involved with missing children. This is correct. My daughter ran away about a year ago, and we found her about 12 days later using a social media campaign, using Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and email, and that organized about 4,000 people who shared, the, uh, who shared an article on the Huffington Post and about 2,500 people who liked an article that we had on uh, Facebook. So this really shows the importance of social media, so much so that you actually developed a social media guide. How is this guide going to help parents and other organizations? When my daughter went missing, we pulled together uh, this attack plan to figure out how to find her, which ultimately did find her. And then after we found her, I realized that nobody else had done it before. And that I, I thought that it was a shame that the organizations that are responsible for helping find missing kids hadn't done this yet. So I decided that it was time that I did it. And so this guide and your website are used by organizations like the police, right? They're used by organizations like the LA Police Department, they're used by a uh, police department in Canada, they're used by an organization called the Association for Missing Exploited Children, which is the umbrella organization for all missing children's organizations. So you also have a website and that's separate from the social media guide. How do they differ? The, the, well, the website's an extension of the social media guide. One of the things that we can do is that it, we can keep up-to-date information on the website, but also we allow, the website allows us to deliver a message of hope to parents. So it reminds parents that they need to uh, keep hope because 97% of all kids eventually do come home. So we want parents to remember that that's important. We also want to remind parents that they have to be the best advocate for their missing child because if they don't make the phone calls, if they don't have hope every day, then the people who are helping them look won't support them as well. So it's educating the parents, but also giving them sort of an incentive to keep going on. Correct. And of course, that 97% is is a very important number as well. It is, and you know, and you know, there wasn't a day that I woke up when I was looking for my daughter that I didn't think this was going to be the day that I was going to find her. So, what do you think it is about social media that's made it so important and 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 such a great tool for bringing the kids home? In my particular case, we had a Huffington Post article that was liked by about 4,000 people, or shared by 4,000 people. Mm -hmm. Um, we also had a Facebook page that had 2,500 likes. Mm -hmm. So these are all people who are actively involved in helping us find my child. What happens is that you get a community of people who are actively involved in looking for a missing child that helps deliver leads to the police and that also gives parents a way to actively look for their child so that they don't have to sit around and wait for the phone to ring they can do something. And this is not, of course, something that parents want to think about, but for those parents that are watching at home, what's your message to them? Well. It's an internet message. One is social media f can help find kids, but it also can help lead kids astray. So what I always want to tell parents is don't treat the internet as a diary. It's not a place that ki they, you kids go and it's just locked up. The internet's a neighborhood. It's where kids go when they want to hang out, play, listen to music. And if you l understand that the internet's a neighborhood, then you need to monitor what your kids are doing online. So you can't look at monitoring what your kids do online as spying. You have to look at it as parenting. You want to be able to parent online the same way that you do in the real world. So now, of course, you had a personal story, but do you think it was your, your background and understanding this that had sort of had an advantage over other parents, or how did you find yourself here? Well, without a doubt, it was, it was, my, it was my background on social media. It was also, uh, you have a lot of good friends who are in social media. I have a really good network of people. And what social media really does in its best form is it able, enables you to activate your social network during times of crisis. So even if it's just having people who can help you bring lasagna over, that matters. Well, you really have been able to offer a message of hope to parents out there. And of course, education. Thanks so much for being here, Tony. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.